Today we're going to take a look at how to use a standard servo. Uh, there's two different programs that we're going to take a look at to see how they actually work. The first one that we're going to take a look at is how to use three basic event handlers, your button A, button B, and button A, B press in order to get your servo to move. A couple of things to consider. Standard servos are based on position. It will only rotate at 180 degrees. This is different from your continuous servo, which we'll address in a later video, on speed. So we're gonna focus mainly on position for your standard servo today. What you'll notice with your image, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that you have an image of an SG90 or Tower Pro standard servo. With your standard servo, you're gonna have three wires that need to be connected. The first being your orange wire, which is gonna to connect to one of your pins, either pin zero, one, or two. In this case, we're gonna use pin zero. You have your voltage, which is your three volts or your red wire, that will get connected to the three volt pin on your micro bit. And then last, you have your brown wire, which is going to connect to your ground. Now for this, you may need to use the four battery pack in order to get enough power for your servo to work. If you're only testing your servo, we should be able to get away with just programming it as it is on the diagram. If not, you might have to take a look at using the four battery pack in one of the documents that have been shared with you. For this, we're gonna basically use our button A press to move our servo's position to the, the far left position of zero. Button B will set our position to 180, and then AB will set it to 90. So taking a look at our make code environment, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our two event handlers that are there, the on start and forever. And what we'll go ahead and do is bring in an on A, duplicate that, and we can use an on B, and then we can go ahead and duplicate that one more time and use our AB button press. Now for this, what we're gonna go ahead and do is basically set our servos to different pin positions. So under the advanced drawer, we're gonna find our pin drawer. And if we, look, if we look through these, we're gonna find that we have the ability to write our pin. So we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna need to duplicate that two additional times. The first is our on A button press. Our flowchart said that we want to set our servo position when the A button is pressed to position zero. So for our A button, we're gonna drop that in. And what we should see in our emulator here is a servo actually appear. One thing to consider is that the emulator in MakeCode only will display a standard servo. So this does not work when we get to the continuous servo activity. When we hit the A button on our emulator, what should happen is that our servo will move to pin position. Now, right now you'll see that nothing's happening and that's because our servo is already set to position zero. Now, if we want to change the actual event handler to go to a different position, we can go ahead and drop that servo right pin zero to 180. This will allow us to use two different event handlers at this time. A button is pressed, we go to position zero. And if we hit the B button, you'll see that we'll go to position 180. And last but not least is our A, B button press, and that's gonna be 90. What should happen is when the A, B button is pressed, we should see our servo go to that 90 position, which is directly in between the zero and 180. So again, A is at zero, B goes to 180, and now A, B will go to 90. Now you can program your servo to go to any position between zero and 180 by using that value. So for example, if we wanted to change the AB press to 45, we should see a 45 degree position, which should be somewhere out here in the bottom left-hand corner. And that's how you can simply program this. Now I'm gonna change that back to 90 so that we have the correct code here. Now, if you wanted to use one event handler for this, we can modify our program by using a forever loop. In this case, we are gonna to need to use some conditional statements. And I'm gonna go ahead and use an if, an else if, another else if, and I'm gonna get rid of that else statement. Now, things to consider when doing this. If we select the A button is pressed first, anytime we press the A, B, it's gonna trigger that if statement to occur first. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is for our if statement, we're gonna to want to address the AB button pressed. So under your input drawer, we do have a pin that says on A button is pressed. And you can see we can change that from an A to a B to an AB. 
we're going to stick with the AB button press first. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that and we'll make an A button press and we'll duplicate that one more time and make that my B button press. From here, we have our conditions and we can simply drag our commands. Here's our A button, my B button, and my AB button. Now, if I get rid of those event handlers up at the top, you can see that now I'm using one event handler, which is a forever loop, to get the same outcome. So here, if the A button is pressed, you can see we're still at the zero position. The B button is pressed, we still go to 180, and the AB will set it at 90. Using a forever block with conditional statements allows us to program more positions based on our servo's needs. So this is your basic standard programming program.